Oh, this was bad. This was bad. This was very not good. The 2023 Acura Integra has officially been announced, and I think it's safe to say that most of the car community is pretty upset. It's not even close to the original, and the branding of Acura as the performance division of Honda doesn't really seem to make sense given the Civic Type R. In today's episode, we're going to talk a little bit about what made the original Integra so good, and why this new model is such a huge disappointment. Let's talk about it. What's going on guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Sean and today we are taking a look at the 2023 Acura Integra. We've been teased with headlights, side profiles, sound clips, and even fan-made renderings, but now the car in its entirety has been revealed. But before we dive right in, take a minute to hit that like button down below. The channel is growing steadily, so let's keep it going. Now, let's jump into it. One of the biggest reasons this reveal was such a letdown is the reverence that JDM fans have for the original Integra. The first gen Integra was released in 1985, the second gen in 1989, but the third generation was where things really got interesting. The third gen Integra was released in 1993 and the top model, the SI, came with the renowned B18C. This engine produced 176 horsepower and it featured a little thing called VTEC. It has had everything from crazy sleeper builds with turbo setups on the B18, K-swaps are super common, and by the way, I'm K-swapping my Subaru BRZ right now, so if you want to see that build, then hit that subscribe button. People have even gone so far as to V8 swap these things. For the car community, the DC1 and DC2 Integra represents a fun, affordable, moderately fast, but super tunable platform that you can do just about anything with. You want to do a track day or autocross? Integra. You want to build a stupid fast drag machine? Integra. You want to go drifting? Okay, the Integra is not that great for drifting unless you do a rear wheel drive conversion, but that's actually pretty common these days. The Integra represents everything about the JDM car scene and what makes it so great, and I think that's why the unveiling of the new car was such a letdown. The Vice President of Acura, John Ikeda, opens up this reveal by saying that Acura has rebranded itself as the performance division of Honda. And right off the bat, I have to say that I disagree. Sure, you've got the new NSX, which was released in 2015, but other than that, it's been the Civic Type R that has been dominating the sports car market. He goes on to say that this Integra ushers in a new era of performance for a new generation of customers. With competition such as the Type R and with modern muscle cars like the Mustang, Camaro, and the Dodge Twins putting out big power for not so big price tags, I'm guessing that the new Integra will be pretty powerful or at least pretty quick around the track. Next up, they reveal a cinematic trailer featuring clips of the DC1 and the DC2 Integra and how the car culture has evolved around the front wheel drive platform for decades. With shots of the new Integra thrown in, I started to think, um, is this really it? Then the lights come up and the car rolls out, revealing what appears to be a new Acura ILX with a big Integra decal on the side of it. As the car spins around, we get our first full look at the new prototype and it is so underwhelming. I know that the online fan-made concept art has no real relation to the actual Acura branding, but I mean, come on. Without the massive Acura branding and the nameplate on the back, I would just assume this to be another four-door Acura sedan. Yes, there was a four-door Integra back in the day, but the one we know and love was always the two-door coupe. The presenter says, we have a clear understanding of the formula that worked in the past. Do you though? Do you understand that the formula that worked in the past was a two-door coupe with angular body lines and a wing on the back? He describes it as sleek and sporty, which, I don't know, are we looking at the same car here? Because I don't see it. And he claims that the five-door design is perfect for active lifestyles. Is that what we're going for here? A roof rack for your mountain bikes and enough room to fit your dog in the back? The sloping roof line has a coupe-like presence? What? And then he mentions how the new car fits the new Acura design language, which, okay, fine. You want to keep all of your models having the same feel and make them recognizable across the whole product line. But you know what isn't recognizable? This Integra. The lighting design and the dual exhaust highlight this car's potential as a true performance five-door. All right, well, with that in mind, it must be able to compete with the Dodge Charger, the quintessential performance five-door. 
If you're going after something anywhere near that, then it must make some decent power, right? I mean, after all, this is the performance division of the Honda brand, so let's keep going. He goes on to say that this is the first turbocharged Integra from the factory and it will deliver on the driving fun of its predecessors. All right, so let's hear about the engine. You ready? With a turbocharged 1.5 liter VTEC engine, an available six speed manual transmission and limited slip differential, Integra is developed with enthusiasts like you and What Mark. is that? The performance division didn't even put the performance engine from the Civic Type R into the flagship performance sports car. What? What the f Like, I don't get it. If you are branding the entire Acura name on the sports car performance division, then why are you just giving us another Acura 1.5 liter sedan? They're using the Civic SI engine. I mean, it's fine. It may be tunable. I've never seen anybody do like a turbo upgrade on it or do a fully built like 1.5 liter before, but I don't know, maybe it's out there. Now, I do have to give some credit where it's due. They're giving the option of a six speed manual and a limited slip differential. So if you're into driving manual, this may be decently fun to drive. There are so few companies offering manual transmissions these days. So I do have to give Acura a little bit of respect for this one. This new Integra will be available on showroom floors next year, priced around $30,000. And you know what? That's just fine. If you want to compete with the Subaru BRZ, I get it. He goes on to restate that this Integra will be a gateway into a new era of performance and that this is just the beginning. So I don't know, maybe they've got something coming for the future. Now, I don't wanna hate on this car too much. It does look great and I'm sure it'll perform well, but this is just very reminiscent of when the Mark V Supra was unveiled. The marketing team tries to push this as the new generation of the model that people have loved for literal decades and it's just not there. However, the Mark V has actually proven to be an exceptional performance machine, and I think that it has followed the Supra name pretty well. If you can get past the BMW interior, which I actually like, and the lack of a manual trans, that is. But this Integra just doesn't hit any of the check marks that we would have for this car. Now, at the end of the presentation, Ikeda mentioned that this is only the beginning for the performance factor of the Acura brand. Maybe this leaves room for them to implement the Type R engine into a sportier model for the Integra, perhaps its own Type R spec. I think that that is the bare minimum for this thing to be considered a success and for Acura to sort of take over as the performance division. Heck, the NSX isn't even available after 2021, so Acura needs to be bringing some absolute bangers over the next few years. Now again, I don't want to hate on the car so much as I think it'll do well and will be a decent little five-door sports car. But that is going to wrap it up for this one, guys. Leave me a comment down below your thoughts on the reveal of the new Acura Integra. I personally think that it was the presentation and the marketing that really killed it for me. If you enjoyed this video, then smash that like button down below. If you want to stay up to date on the latest car news or follow my personal builds, then subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out. We'll see you guys on the next one. Gamer. Hey, I'm I'm recording a video here. What's up? I'm recording a video. What's up? Okay. I'm driving over a river. All right. I'm I'm going to let you go. Okay, I love you. Bye. Okay, bye.